Hello and welcome back. Linux Pluggable Authentication Modules PAM. It is a mechanism which provides dynamic authentication support for applications and services in Linux. Before using PAM, any program that needs to do authentication related activities had to use its own method for authentication. For example, if this application want to verify username and password, so it is using its own method such as checking slash etc slash password and slash etc slash shadow. By using PAM, this application will ask PAM to do the authentication related activity. So we separated the details of how authentication related activities are to be performed from this application and PAM will handle it based on PAM configuration file. Each application has its own configuration file the configuration file contains a stack of several modules which will be started executing from the top to the bottom and get result. Based on this result, the authentication will succeed or fail. With BAM, it is easy to change our security policy or to add new authentication mechanism. For example, if I want to use a device to scan a fingerprint, what I need is just adding the required stack module in the new configuration file. Before using PAM, changes like that would have required source code changes to the application itself. So PAM makes it life easier for the administrators and developers as well. PAM has two parts. First part is a collection of PAM modules which are dynamically linked libraries. In Red Hat system, you can find them under slash lab slash security for 32 bit, and for 64 bit, it will be under slash lab 64 slash security. Each module performs one specific task, such as Unix traditional authentication, enforcing password strength, locking an account after too many failed logins, and so on. The second part is a set of configuration files in slash etc slash pam.d. Also, there are some other configuration files under slash etc slash security. As we explained before, each application has its own configuration file. Each configuration file contains a stack of several modules to get the job done. The configuration file has the same name as the service. For example, the file for SSH daemon would be slash etc slash pam.d slash sshd and the file for login application is slash etc slash pam.d slash login the configuration file has a standard format each line start with a type of module interface then pam control flag then module name and any module arguments first field is a module interface we have four types of pam modules interface each of these corresponds to a different aspect of authorization process. Auth is responsible for checking that the user is who they say. To verify the user identity, the modules that can be listed in this area generally supporting a prompting for a password. Account. This module interface verifies that access is allowed. For example, it checks if a user account has expired or if a user is allowed to log in at a particular time of day. Password. Password modules are responsible for changing passwords. Maybe also use it to enforce strong passwords. Session. Session module defines actions that are performed at the beginning and the end of the sessions, such as performing special logging, mounting the user's home directories, or setting resource limits. PAM module controls. The control flag determines what PAM should do if the module either succeeds or fails. You can use one of the common keywords such as requisite, required, sufficient, include, or optional. Requisite. If this module fails, PAM immediately returns a failure result to the application, and no further modules in the stack are called. Required. If this module fails, PAM returns a failure result to the application, but it will continue to call the next module in the stack to be executed and the result at the end will fail. Sufficient. If this module succeeds, PAM returns a pass result to the application, and no further modules in the stack are called. 
This assumes, of course, that a required module hasn't failed higher up the stack. Include includes a configuration from another file and checking the additional rules from the other file determines the success or failure of the include rule itself. Optional. The pass fail result of this module is ignored, which generally means that this module is being called to perform some operations rather than participating in the pass fail decision for the stack. In the third module, we will find that the actual path to the module that gets invoked. Sometimes you can find the module arguments which used by PAM to pass information to a pluggable module during authentication for some modules. Look at this sample of configuration file. We have four separated modules are listed. PAM secure TTY, PAM env, PAM LDAP, PAM Unix. Each module of them is doing specific task. So PAM will start from the top to the bottom executing these lines. And based on the result of the stack, the authentication will succeed or fail. As you can see, we have in the first line requisite. So if this rule failed, the program will exit and the result will be failed. But if it is passed, so it will go to the next rule. As we can see, it is required. If this succeeded, that means it's okay. We will check the next modules. But if this failed, the result will be failed, but we have to keep continue to call the next modules. Let's say it succeeded. The next rule is sufficient. If this passed, that means the program will exit will succeed and will skip the next module and no further checking. The order here is very important. If sufficient came before and if required will fail, it will not impact because at the end the authentication will succeed because sufficient will skip the next two modules. Until this point, we understood the concept of PAM, how it is work and understood the configuration file format. Now I want to know which programs use PAM. Well, any program that needs to authenticate users, control logins, allocate resources to users, or update login credentials can make it life easier by using PAM. Programs like login, the program that lets you login in a terminal, GDM lets you log in into a graphical desktop. SU lets you start a new shell with new identity. Password lets you choose a new password. So how can I know if a particular program uses PAM or not? We can use LDD command and provide the path of the program, which is, for example, slash pin slash login and then by grip lib pam so as you can see this program is using pam if there is no output that means it doesn't use pam the second way is to look at the configuration files under slash etc slash bam.d because you will find the configuration file name is similar to the program name. So as you can see here, we have a login program. Finally, if you want more information about PAM, you can check slash usr share doc slash PAM files. Also, you can man the module name to get more information about it and how to use it. Thank you for watching and see you in next lesson.